Good afternoon to you. Mark Suddeth, HurricaneTrack.com here with your last Hurricane Outlook and discussion for 2016. I've been battling a head cold, so I probably sound terrible. So I'm going to try to be quick on this. It's the off-season edition, of course, not hurricane season any longer. But we do talk about some things that we look for when anticipating next year's hurricane season. And one of those would be the sea surface temperature anomalies. And I want to show you where we have come from. Okay, this is remarkable. One year ago, raging El Nino in the tropical Pacific. And this year, very much the opposite. Uh, really hard to call this a La Nina any longer looking at the different indicators through here. But overall temperatures in the equatorial Pacific, a lot cooler, clearly, than they were this time last year. And you know, there's been a lot made of how warm 2016 was. Well, you know, this is like going and turning up the thermostat for the globe. It really is. You know, a heat lamp, you know, for your bearded dragon or whatever. You understand? It's like, well, of course it was the one of the warmest years ever. You had this incredibly warm, giant area of the Pacific Ocean, and that has all kinds of implications. Now that we've gone to the cooler look, if next year is very warm compared to average globally, then I'm going to start becoming more concerned because, logically speaking, I won't have a way to sort of explain it. Uh, so we'll see. I just I see a lot of talk. And, and yeah, 2016 was very warm. No kidding. I mean, Christmas Day here was like 70 degrees or something like that. And it was the same last year as well. Anyway, my voice is just terrible, kind of a laryngitis thing, so let's move on. We'll deal with climate change at a later time, if need be. Really not my area of expertise, but I do like the El Nino Southern Oscillation influence, the ENSO, and how that influences global weather. Colder Pacific has one set of results, and a warmer Pacific another set of results entirely. Now, that's pretty fascinating. Anyway... What does the subsurface look like? Well, this was updated on the 24th of December, and you can see our cold pool here being chipped away even more. And then, really, this is pretty remarkable. Large area of warm anomaly starting to show up in the equatorial um, subsurface of the Pacific. And we're talking about 250 meters deep, 50 to 100 meters deep here. Uh, and these anomalies are not very strong. We're not seeing them over here on the right-hand side. Uh, but this is something to watch. Does this migrate and move eastward and then eventually arrive at the surface? Yeah, we'll see. Again, as I talk about, this is something we can monitor every week to 10 days or so. As a result of some of this information, the latest plumes for the different ENSO forecasts Generally indicating, if we just kind of look at the consensus here, uh, warm neutral. There's the neutral line. There's your El Nino line. So most of the modeling here showing warm to neutral, warm neutral conditions next year. Um, you don't see any large deviations up here or down here. Generally speaking, the model divergence is fairly small. Considering we're talking about, look at this time frame, August, September, October, way out in the peak of hurricane season. Uh, you know, there's some spread, sure, but, you know, we'll see. Usually, like I said last week, you don't get two El Ninos two years apart like that. Uh, but, you know, some of the modeling indicating perhaps there's a chance, but this far out, there's a lot of predictability uh, barriers literally in the way. You know, first of all, that's way out in time. Things can change, so forth and so on. The standard caveat applies. Well, as we see the neutral green generally fading off as we get into next summer, this is the beginning of the 2017 hurricane season. And lo and behold, by August, September, October, uh, the chances of El Nino up to a little over 35%, or right around 35%, something like that. Neutral coming in. Just a little bit higher. La Nina, 
um, statistically kind of goes up through this time period. So that's what I'm saying. You look at this, and you don't really have any one indicator jumping out ahead of the other. It's not like the El Nino chances are way up here, and you're not going to see that at this lead time anyway. But it is kind of interesting that the La Nina uh, portion also goes upward at a lower angle or a lower ascent rate, but nevertheless, you know, something to ponder over the months ahead as we await the next big winter storm. And that's what I'll be looking for in the off-season discussion. We talk about lower 48 weather as well, especially when my voice is better. <laughs> and I'm um, going to lose some YouTube subscribers after today. Oh, I can't listen to that guy anymore. Hey, trust me, this is the worst it's been all year. It's winter. I'm supposed to have a cold. Uh, anyway, lower 48 weather. The main thing that I look for uh, from my professional field work opportunities is a big east coast storm uh, that maybe comes out of the gulf and rides up the east coast maybe it comes as a clipper system like we had last year and the year before uh really haven't had anything like that a pretty good nor'easter came through something like this recently but that was way up in uh, new england proper you know really up into uh, vermont and massachusetts and maine and I really couldn't get up there for that. So I'm looking for those ones that will trek up the coast, uh, maybe reach the benchmark out here somewhere, and then head out uh, dumping 40 inches of snow, 80 mile an hour winds, that kind of thing. You know, a winter hurricane. And we don't see that in the, in the cards just yet. However, the pattern is changing. Uh, today, a smattering of different warnings, lake effect snow warnings in the usual places, Winter weather advisories, winter storm warnings, and so forth for the Appalachians. And some wind advisories here in these, what would you call that, magenta color? But overall, the map isn't too menacing as we get towards New Year's Eve, big travel period. But things are going to turn sharply, and I'm telling you, sharply colder as we get into 2017. And see, there you go. It's, you know, you it's supposed to have cold periods, but we're going to get rid of this warmth and really chip away, I think, at this idea that, oh, it's permanently warm now, and we're going to start 2017 that way. So let me show you. This is the next seven days on the GFS 500 millibar. Watch this giant trough up here start to evolve as this lobe of the polar vortex sort of breaks off and comes down into the lower 48. At the same time, huge area of rising heights in the atmosphere over here in the Gulf of Alaska, and that sends the uh, lobe of the vortex down. It's just a fancy meteorological term. It got a lot of hype in 2014 you know, with not much context. It's a fancy way and a meteorological way of saying really big-time cold is coming, not just these transient sort of sharp troughs coming in and you can see that evolving over the next week here and I'm just going to jump to the last frame to show you uh, by the time we get out to day 7 so this will be the 6th of January check it out huge trough covering a good deal of the lower 48 and this will dig even more after a week's time and then start to move south and east and so even folks here along the east coast you're going to get on, on some bitterly cold weather. But I'm going to tell you something before I sign off here. You folks out here in the West, get ready. It is going to be brutal cold and something you know that really needs to be taken uh, seriously because some of this cold, believe it or not, is going to be record-setting. Now, how long has it been since we've seen record-setting cold? All this talk about record-setting heat. And with this kind of a pattern, big old ridge of high pressure in the Gulf of Alaska driving that jet stream and parts of the polar vortex lobe into the southern part of the 48 contiguous states. Trouble is brewing for winter weather lovers. It's just a matter of time. And I'll be watching that uh, very closely and drinking lots of water to get my throat back in shape. Uh, and uh, if we do get a, a big nor'easter along the east coast, uh, especially if it's going to produce storm surge and a lot of coastal effects, with blizzard conditions, then yes, that's something I'm very interested 
in covering. It helps me keep my skills up, provide some testing opportunities and so forth. And um, it pays off. It really does. And I'm almost finished. It's taken a long time here, about six weeks, with the latest movie, documentary, of the hurricane season. And it actually goes through all of 2016, of course. But then I go back and look at what I've been doing since 2008 when I produced the last one. And you're going to see that practice, you know, we're not perfect yet, but it certainly helps. And all these testing opportunities that we took when there were no hurricanes really paid off in 2016. And you're going to see that in the, um, the documentary as I wrap it up. Uh, goal is to get it done before January the 10th, and I'll make a big release you know, announcement about it and so forth, and we'll deal with that coming up. But it's about 90% finished, a lot of editing. I do the music for it myself on synthesizers, so I've got to compose music, narration, editing, and I really try to put my heart into it. If you've seen my other stuff, um, it's a real passion of mine. So anyway, I'm going to go rest my throat. And you guys have a great New Year's coming up. Be safe out there. Nothing dumb, okay? Be safe. We want you back for 2017 and uh, start building up the subscriber base again on the YouTube channel from people who've bailed out because of today's sore throat episode. Uh, I'm just kidding. Uh, but, yeah, it's been a great year. I really appreciate everybody's support. Uh, yeah, we did. We went from 1,500 YouTube subscribers in January to over 4,300 now. And while that's not setting any YouTube records, it means a lot to me. So that's wonderful. I appreciate it. And the rest of social media has grown as well for us in what was a very, very productive year. So thanks a lot from my family, my staff, crew, everybody involved behind the scenes and on the front lines. We appreciate uh, you guys being a part of this on the other side of the computer screen. All right? So, again, have a great weekend coming up. I'm Mark Suttoth for HurricaneTrack.com. I'll talk to you early next year.